let's get started. So my name is Phil from Crick Software, and as Craig said, yeah, I've been with with Crick for quite a while now, since 2005. And um, what I'm delighted to show you today are a couple of things. We're going to focus on um, Clicker 8, which is uh, the brand new version of our um, of our very popular Clicker software. Um, I'm also going to um, briefly dip into uh, Docs Plus, and I'm going to say a little bit about our new universal licensing for Clicker, which is is quite a big change that's come out with um, quite a big change that's come out with Clicker 8. So, for those of you uh, that are not familiar with Clicker, so um, Clicker is a reading and writing support tool, and it can also help our children with speaking listening too. We have speaking listening activities, matching activities, labeling activities. So some teachers will use Clicker to introduce a topic to a lesson, um, to a class in a lesson, and uh, and then they, they might go on to uh, use the writing support facilities. And it's the writing support facilities that we're going to uh, focus on particularly in in the next few minutes. OK, now, one of the things that uh, I want to point out is I'm showing you Clicker 8 on a computer at the moment. Um, but the new licenses for Clicker 8 are what we call universal licenses. So if you bought, say, five licenses um, for, for Clicker now, you could put Clicker 8 on a computer. And then you've got four other licenses, which could go to um, our iPad apps. Um, so you could put, at the moment, we have Clicker Writer, um, which supersedes Clicker Sentences, Clicker Connect, and Clicker Docs on the previous generation of apps. That's all wrapped up in Clicker Writer. You could put that on iPads, or you could also um, put it on, um, you can give it to Chrome users too, okay? So the, the, the licensing is now universal. And if you want access right across the school, then we do a site license, which is unlimited licenses in, in school and out of school. Okay, so this is the screen that you get when you first open uh, Clicker. This is the Clicker Explorer. And from here, we can start a brand new document, okay, which is what I'm going to do in just a second. We might start a board. So if we're helping a child um, organize their thoughts, we could use the board for maybe a mind map, or we could do some uh, labeling activity or a sorting activity, or it could be an initial stimulus at the start of a lesson if we're teaching a class. We've also got the ability to start a book, and books are great. So books, you can make books for the children to read. Um, then they can narrate them themselves into the computer. Uh, they can also demonstrate their comprehension and also their writing skills by writing their own versions of the book. Or actually, they can create their own, uh, their own books from scratch, which they can share with you or share with their class colleagues or share with their parents. Um, and brand new in Clicker, you can now put uh, videos directly into, into the Clicker books. OK? Um, We've also got some more apps um, as well as Clicker Writer in development, and one of the it and one of the ones in development I can tell you is Clicker Books. So you will be able to use these books on iPads and Chromebooks in the future. So I'm going to start a new document, and for those of you that maybe are not familiar with Clicker, we're just going to look at some of the core uh, support facilities that we've got for a writer in Clicker. So I want you to imagine that I'm a little girl doing some writing, and I'm going to type in my name is Rosie. Now I'm going to punctuate the sentence and Clicker will respond by doing a number of things. So watch carefully. My name is Rosie. Okay, so you can hear that Clicker reads straight back to us in, um, in uh, a very human sounding voice. Okay, this is a child's voice. Um, we have a number of voices that come with Clicker 8. There are four children's voices. You can also download some adult voices and you can also use the Scottish voices if you wish to. Um, you might have noticed that I didn't put a capital M for my, I didn't put a capital R for Rosie, but Clicker sorted that out for me. Okay. If I don't want Clicker to do that, and this is kind of a, a theme throughout Clicker and throughout Docs Plus, is you can tailor the level of support that Clicker is giving by going into options. And in this case, we could go into the spell check options and we can take off the automatic capitalization of the first letter of sentences and names. Okay. So that's something we can control. Something else sometimes people ask me at this point if we can control is the speed of the speech, and we certainly can. So if we go into our speech options, we could choose different speech engines from that drop down, and we can also choose how fast Clicker is going to read to us using that slider. You can also control 
whether it just speaks at the end of the sentence or whether it also perhaps speaks as they're writing a sentence. And for a child with a lot of additional support needs who maybe takes quite a long time to complete a sentence, sometimes having that speech support as they're going along in the sentence can be really helpful. If you ever work with anybody who is visually impaired, you will appreciate the letters being spoken as they're clicked on. And that, um, that's great. So if I'm not sure if I've hit an I or an L because clicker is speaking at the name of the letter, then you can be sure. OK, so um, what it also did was highlight the text as it reads. So that's really useful, gives visual reinforcement to the speech support and helps children link the words in their mind to the words on the page. OK, next I'm going to type in, uh, I find writing really hard. It doesn't read until I punctuate, so it's great at teaching children that they need to punctuate their work. When they do, they're checking it because they can hear it's wrong. I find writing really hard. OK, and then we can use this lovely child friendly on screen spell checker here. If I'm not sure which is the correct word. Sitting. Writing. With a right click, I can listen. OK, um, if you were doing that on a um, not on an iPad, obviously you're not using a mouse, so you can't right click. So you use the blue button here, which is the um, sound shift button. So you click on sound shift and anything you want to hear will be spoken to you. OK. We also have the ability to have a built-in sound recorder. So uh, children working at home in a blended learning environment, the teacher could record on the document some instructions for them. And also children can use this. They can kind of um, download all their ideas by talking into the sound recorder. You can have multiple voice notes and uh, then they can listen to those back as they're doing their writing. OK, next bit of support we have is a prediction tool. So I'm going to type um, Sometimes, and I'm making a bit of a, miss, a mess of spelling this, but it's still helping me. Sometimes I take um, photos, oh, yep, uh, on dad's, or oh, which one of those do I want? I think I want the one at the bottom on dad's camera, and it helps. There we go. Sometimes I take photos on dad's camera. If we were going to type something like we was going swimming, if I type in we, it doesn't give me was because it knows that were should follow we, not was. Whereas if I type in I, it gives me was. So the, the predictor can help both with spelling and also help with, um, with grammar, what word should be coming next. OK, just want to point this out. I like to build cardboard models. I like to build cardboard models. So this is a sentence that a student with dyslexia might find difficult, lots of D's and B's, O's and A's, and we can make some visual adjustments to clicker if we wish, and we can store these in these class settings here. We're going to make some visual adjustments to clicker, okay, and now you can see we're using a different font and different screen colors. OK, I'm just going to pop that back to normal and also point out that Clicker is a very accessible tool. OK, and if we go into options and access, then here we have the ability to set eye gaze or mouse dwell, which is also useful for rollerballs uh, and uh, joysticks. And then we've got um, one switch and two switch, um, one switch and two switch scanning. OK, right. Um, Next, um, we're going to look at a word bank. So let's open, actually, this is called a connect set um, because we're connecting different sections of a sentence. And I'm going to, I'm going to choose my, I'm going to listen. Favorite. I'm going to do my favorite food. I'm going to manually change it to foods rather than change foods there. And I'm going to say, ah, uh, um, pizza and chips. OK. My favorite foods are pizza and chips. OK, so we've done some writing. And one of the brand new things in Clicker 8 is that we can now go to analytics and we can see a complete breakdown of exactly how the child managed to achieve that work. So we can use that to see um, if we're giving the appropriate level of support, how they've achieved the task, what words they've had difficulty on. We can see everything they've put in via the predictor, every time they've used a the spell check or what clicker sets they've used. And this gives us great feedback and can help inform what we're doing following on from, from this piece of work. Do we need to give them more support, less support in the future? OK, right. Next, um, we're going to have a quick look at something brand new um, for brand new for uh, Clicker 8, and that's Clicker Close. So let's create a close document. So what I've got um, here is a, a blank close activity, and I want to make a close activity. And I've got um, some text here <clears throat> on Egyptians. So I'm going to copy this text, and I'm going to paste that into here. 
and literally we can just do express remove we'll take out every fifth word go and in an instant we've got a close activity that they, they can do that interactively on clicker eight or they could or you could print that out and use that as a paper-based activity okay next um in clicker we've um We've massively increased uh, the number of learning grids and we've included a lot of premium content there. So if in the past you've used things like the Find Out and Write About series, those are all on learning grids now. Planet Wobbles on learning grids, New to English is on learning grids, and there's more and more content going up all the time. In fact, even though we've only had Clicker 8 out since the start of this year, we've already got 2,129 resources up there. I'm going to open a particular resource called uh, uh, Traditional Story Words. OK, just to show you another uh, new aspect in Clicker 8. So um, if we're doing some writing, we're doing a traditional story at the moment. OK, and maybe there's a child that is struggling to access some of that text. What we can do is click on edit. We're going to make the cells a little bit bigger. And then we've got this magic button here which says picture eyes. So when we do that, look at that. It's now automatically put pictures in uh, on all of those cells. So those students that need that bit of extra support, they've got that picture support there for them. You can also use that um, to help with, um, if children are using symbols, you can get um, things like PCS symbols, symbol sticks, and widget symbols to work with Clicker. So if you've got, um, uh, you, can, you can get those as an add-on to Clicker 8, and then you can use those symbols in there. OK, so that's um, a very, very, very quick um, overview of Clicker 8. So at the moment, um, I've just looked really at the writing. I've really just looked at the writing aspect of Clicker 8 there. There are lots of other types of activities. Those three on that screen are all also supported by the apps, but we've got lots of new planning boards. We've got the talking books with a book app coming, and we've also got the speaking, listening activities, matching activities, and other ones like custom sets with labeling and picture banks, etc. OK, so that's a very quick, um, that's a very quick overview of um, Clicker 8. Just want to say uh, a couple of things about, um, about Docs Plus. So Docs Plus offers many of the same uh, levels of support that Clicker does. It's less pictorial, and it hasn't really got the sort of speaking and listening side, but it has got all the same uh, sort of writing support. So we've got the voice note facility. We've got the predictor. Um, the, the default voice is for Docs Plus, because it's aimed more at secondary pupils, tends to be um, the adult voices, but you can download the child's voices for it you have many of the same options in terms of accessibility so you can um, use it with eye gaze you can use it with switches you can change the screen colors um, you can enlarge the screen there's lots of visual accommodations you can make and physical accommodations too okay uh, if we go to learning grids because of course there's learning grids available for docs plus two if we go to learning grids you will see um, that the sort of Activities that we've got in learning grids are aimed much toward, uh, more towards secondary pupils. So look at like biology, cells, the human body, chemical reactions, forces and motion. If we look at English literature, we've got modern texts that are often done um, in their examinations. Um, if we go to geography, you can see the geography topics and the history topics are more skewed towards that secondary audience. We also have um, some activities for what we call workspace, which is like the mind mapping tool that works with Docs Plus. One of the really interesting things about Docs Plus is that it's suitable for students to use an examination. So here I've got a, a PDF of an exam paper open, and if I'm struggling to read that, I can click on it. What is the function of the coronary arteries? And it will read that back to me. And I can have that read back to me as many times as I like, which is much better than having uh, an adult sat next to you. And maybe you're feeling embarrassed about asking them to repeatedly read this question over and over again. You won't be embarrassed about clicking a button on a computer. You can get that support. And then we could be answering um, the paper above. You can also answer directly on the paper if it's one of those editable exam, you know, one of those exa editable exam papers. Also with um, uh, Docs Plus, we have something called exam mode. So if we go into exam mode, it's password protected, and then you can actually set uh, word bars, workspace, doc reader, speech, predictor, spell check, edit, Docs Plus options. You can lock all that down in the examination so that you know uh, that think um, that the student can't access anything that's um, that's not within their access arrangements.
Okay, so that's the quickest overview of Clicker 8 and, and Docs Plus. I'm aware that I'm getting close to the end of my time. I'd just like to refer you back to our website. So um, we've got um, at cricksoft.com, we have lots of really good information for you. So um, Clicker 8 for primary, that will tell you all about Clicker here, specifically about the latest version Clicker 8. There's an overview on that page, and if you click on what's new, it talks you through some of the new aspects like the clothes, the analytics, the picture eyes, the new curriculum resources, the new boards and books, the new voices, and also the new li licensing. Click a writer here, that tells you about what, what aspects work on the Chromebook and the iPad, and then as more apps become available over the course of the next few years, um, those will also go up on the website there. If you go to the product page on Docs Plus, it will go through all the main options there, and it will, um, if we go to the Docs Plus um, in exam section there, there's a, there's a kind of good overview of how to use Docs Plus in examinations. Okay, so look, that was a very, very, very quick overview of um, Clicker, um, of Clicker and Docs Plus. Um, if you'd like to find out more, um, it's uh, you can absolutely reach me. I'm going to just actually just type in my email address here. It's uh, Phil, um, Phil. Oh, it's going to speak now. Phil dot Hackett uh, at Cricksoft dot com. Okay. So um, you can reach me on that if you've got any questions.